Okay, I think okay. it's time to move on. So Thank thanks you. again for your talk. And we're just going to switch now. The next talk will be given by Antonio Costa from Amsterdam, and we'll be talking about bridging time scales in C elegance. And just give us a minute on the computer. There. Okay. Will you change? change. Go. Go. Uh, right. Let me do it. Share my screen. Oh no. So everything's on you now. Yep. Okay. Uh, what do you see? The presentation? Okay, perfect. All right. Well, first of all, thanks for the organizers for letting me crash the social interactions meeting. It's funny because I'm actually going to be talking about antisocial behavior in, in <laughs> the love strain of sea Um They like to feed uh, alone. And specifically, where I'm going to focus on the multi-scale um, structure of the behavior. So animal behavior exhibits multiple time scales, right? So there's a fine scale posture movements like you can see here in this video that are controlled by motor neurons. And there's also longer time scale sequences of behavior that are being uh, controlled by higher order structures in the nervous system. And these structures can also be modulated by hormones, envir environmental cues, etc. etc. Um, and importantly, these internal states, they sort of um, impact the likelihood of different types of behaviors and the sequences of behaviors as well. And we currently lack a framework to explicitly bridge time scales such that we can sort of uh, extract these longer lived sequences of behaviors from fine scale postural characterizations of behavior. So let's look at this example here. So on the left hand side, I have a video uh, on the left side of that video, you have the, the position of the worm in a plate. On the right hand side, you have just a, um, a zoomed in version of the posture of the worm. And you can see that there's important dynamics happening on millisecond time scales. You, you see how the head is fluctuating and the, and the body wave going through the worm. And there's a large bulk of work trying to understand these fine scale postural behaviors um, and trying to connect that with the, with the neural activity. On the other hand, if you zoom out completely and you focus only on the position of the, of the worms on the plate, you also see longer time scale structures like uh, sequences of behaviors where the worm moves really fast and across the plate, and th those are called roaming. And you can see that they happen on minute long time scales and the worms um, exhibit higher speeds and lower uh, curving rates. And on the other hand, you also have um, long behaviors where the worms basically just stay in a local region of the plate and they, they stay there and they dwell at low speeds and, and, high cur and low curvatures, sorry, high curvatures. Um, so it, it is extremely challenging to kind of bridge these two time scales because on the one hand, you have this continuous fast time scale dynamics. On the other hand, you have this much longer time scale roaming and dwelling states. And so trying to bridge the gap between these two time scales is going to be basically the, the purpose of, of the talk today. Um, so specifically, we're going to be thinking about animal movement through the language of differential equations. So you can think about this uh, X here as being some uh, the postural state of the animal, and that will evolve in time according to some complicated nonlinear functions f and gamma, and possibly noise as well. And under this framework, basically, um, different behaviors will correspond to different trajectories in state space. Right? But instead of focusing uh, on the trajectories themselves or working directly with the differential equation, what we will do is that we will uh, work with the statistical uh, description of the dynamics. So we'll look at the evolution of phase space densities or ensembles of points in phase space through the language of the peron frobenius operator, which is this object here on the right, which evolves densities in time by time scale tau. The idea of using densities is that basically um, by subsuming sort of the nonlinear nature of the dynamics into the approximation of this linear operator, that we can get an effective model of the dynamics, but also a means to um, um, decompose the dynamics into a hierarchy of modes uh, that evolve on different time scales. So because this operator acts on densities, if you approximate it, it's going to be a, a Markov, a finite Markov chain. And we know from uh, Markov chain theory that the eigenvalues will be bounded by above by the eigenvalue one, which corresponds to the invariant density of the system. And the remaining eigenfunctions uh, are going to decay to this invariant density um, on different time scales that are proportional to the log of the eigenvalue. And so the hope with using this framework is that basically we can extract or find eigenfunctions of this operator that um, evolve over much longer time scales than the fine scale postural dynamics, such that we can sort of abstract from the fine scale unpredictability of motion 
and still be able to pull out these emergent coarse grain properties of the dynamics over much longer time scales. So how do we actually do this from data? So the data that we will be working on um, is basically a collection of hundreds of worms crawling on a plate with food. And what we do is that basically we track the posture of the worm. So we have a way of quantifying the shape of the worm as a set of numbers. And that allows us to basically transform a video into a multi-dimensional time series. And this is going to be basically the dynamics that we're going to be focusing on. Um, now, one of the main principles behind the um, framework that I've just described with the transport operator is that the dynamics is first order. So we need to have the full state, the full dynamical state of the system in order to be able to build the operator in the first place. And nothing guarantees that these measurements that we're taking from the worm, that they obey first order dynamics. In fact, higher order dynamics are extremely common in physics. Even the position of the harmonic oscillator evolves the second order dynamical system, right? What this basically means is that if I give you the, just the position of the, of the oscillator at time t, you won't be able to tell me whether the oscillator is moving away or, or towards the resting state, right? So you need to expand the definition of state and add dynamical information, either, for example, by adding the momentum, right? So if you have the position of momentum, then you have what we call the phase space, and, and then we can write down a system of first order the differential equations and predict the future. Another way to add this dynamical information is to explicitly add a time delay. So if I give you two time points now, you, can, you will be able to make an accurate prediction of the future, right? So this is basically what we're going to do for the worm. So we're going to take these posture measurements and we're going to add time delays to these posture measurements and assess basically the predictability of this new state space that has more um, dynamical information through the entropy rate of the dynamics, which is basically a measure of the unpredictability of the system. And so if we apply this to a collection of time series coming from worms, what we find is that as we add delays to our definition of state, so as we increase the state space dimension, uh, that basically the entropy rate or the unpredictability of the system drops. And in this case, we're going to work with uh, the number of lags of 15 frames, which is about half a second, uh, which is about half a body wave uh, for the worm dynamics. And so once you define the system's state, uh, then we can approximate the action of the operator by making small partitions in state space and basically computing the transition matrix between all of these microstates. And of course, this transition matrix will be dependent on the actual transition time scale, this parameter tau over here. And depending on your choice of tau, you essentially get different representations of the dynamics. And we will guide our choice of tau essentially by asking that the Markov chain is approximately Markovian. And in order to do that, we're going to make use of the uh, chapman komogorov identity, which basically states that if I act on densities with the operator n times, and if the operator is memoryless and fully Markovian, then that's the same as acting on the density with an operator built on a time scale of n times tau. And what this means is that if I compute the relaxation times of the implied time scales here on the bottom, that these will be independent of the transition time if the system is truly Markovian. So what we're going to do basically is that we're going to compute these relaxation times as a function of the transition time scale for, uh, for this data set that I've showed you before. And what we find is the following. So here I'm only showing you the, the 20 longest lived eigenfunctions of the operator, uh, the implied time scales of these eigenfunctions. And you can see that some of these eigenfunctions, they decay over time scales of hundreds of seconds. So this is getting closer to these minutes long time scale changes in, in behavior that we've seen before with these roaming and dwelling states that the worms do on the plate on longer time scales. Now, to understand better the nature of these longer-lived um, dynamics, I'm going to focus only on the longest-lived eigenfunction. And here I'm showing you on the left-hand side a, the speed and the curvature obtained from centroid trajectories. Now I'm, I'm not using posture. I'm using basically the position of the worms on the plate. From that, I'm computing speed and the path curvature of the worms. Um, and color-coded, I have clustered the longest-lived eigenfunction using fuzzy clustering. So it, from blue to red, I get the probability of belonging to each of the two clusters that I'm clustering the eigenfunction into. And you can clearly see that basically one of these clusters will correspond to high speed, low curvature states that have been previously described as, as a roaming state. And the other state will, be, uh, will have high curvatures and low speeds, which has been described previously as a dwelling state. And you can also see here on the right hand side that these states evolve over minutes long time scale, which is quite remarkable for mainly two reasons. One is we, we are not using uh, the centroid position information to get to extract these long lived second functions. We're only using the body posture of the worm and we're using high resolution, high temporal resolution body posture. 
And nonetheless, we extract these much longer time scale sequences of behaviors by basically thinking principally about the definition of state and building these um, re statistical representation of the dynamics through the, the Porton Frobenius operator. So just to quickly wrap up, um, I've introduced uh, a new framework for explicitly trying to bridge time scales in animal behavior, which is one of the main challenges we have nowadays. And it basically um, consists of this step of state space reconstruction, so thinking about the state of the system principally, and using that state to then look at the evolution of densities in state space through the approximation of this operator. And so by, by subsuming then the nonlinearities in the approximation of the operator, we get the model of the dynamics over multiple time scales, and we've applied it to the worm, and we've seen how we can decompose the, the dynamics from milliseconds all the way up to minutes long time scales. Um, finally, we're now kind of working on trying to understand what are the underlying mechanisms that drive these, drive these longer um, time scale changes in behavior um, through genetic and environmental perturbations. And I'd just like to thank Tosif and David Jordan and my supervisor, Brett Stevens. So that's all. Thank you. Yay. Very good. Thank you, Antonio. We have time for questions. Let's take a look. Anti-social questions. <laughs> and I get to ask a question while we wait for other questions. So what do you miss about animal behavior in this approach? What, what dynamics do you think you might miss? Or are you not getting? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's really hard to know what do you miss, to be honest, because you, you're starting from the microstates, which are like millisecond long uh, behavioral states, and you can get all the way up to these minute long. I, I mean, I'm, here I'm focusing on specifically on a, on a specific data set with worms around food and exhibit these long time scale behaviors. Um, but I, I don't know how to answer that question. I'm not sure what you missed, to be honest. Okay. Do you have any insights on that? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> any, any other questions? I'll ask one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I guess in, there was a video you showed where the worm was moving around at the beginning and it looked like there were some specks. Like, so are you considering them in a, in a system where there's food or is it just, are they just- Oh, so these them? specks are actually eggs. Oh, I see. Yeah, so the, the worms are basically crawling in a, a patch of food. So they, they feed on bacteria and there's food right. everywhere. Oh, okay. So there's no sort of exploration and exploitation trade up going on? There is. That's, there? Ex that's exactly what roaming and dwelling kind of okay. is. But we, it, it's hard, to, I wouldn't call them exploration and exploitation because we don't actually know what the worm is trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're just observing the, the dynamics. Uh, but you could think of it as an exploration exploitation trade-off where dwelling basically you're exploring a local food patch mm -hmm. and roaming maybe you're not happy with that food patch and you're going to want to explore different parts of the zone. Okay. So basically you're getting at this exploration exploitation trade-off but from from the posture. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. I think I think it's time to move on. So let's thank Antonio again. I need to 